Hello everybody, my name's Paul Tace. Um, I'm trying a new format tonight. I'm going to do a reaction to um, the Mavic Free, the DJI Mavic Free launch, uh, which is today, November the 5th, and I'm reporting from uh, the cupboard under the stairs. So, uh, <laughs> as you can probably guess, I don't have a lot of money. But uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and take a look at this drone. Now, um, this is obviously the picture of it here, and um, we know there's two models, we know it's got two cameras, and uh, it, it's going to be a decent piece of kit. And uh, this one here is the cinema version, so obviously this is going to be the more expensive one, uh, with a few more gadgets on there, I would hope. But the first thing I want to find out is how much is this drone? So <laughs> let's click on the buy now. Uh... <laughs> okay, so it's 1800 it's basically 1900 I I would basically say this drone is pretty much two grand, and then uh, and that is just the drone itself. If we look underneath, we've got the uh, Fly More combo, and that's that's uh, two and a half thousand pounds, and it, it it's an extra six hundred pounds for the Fly More combo. What are we getting for that? Includes three intelligent flight batteries, as we'd expect, charging hub, one a carrier bag, ND filters. And that's that's basically it. Do we, they must give you some um, propellers with that as well, some extra propellers. Okay, yeah. So we've uh, got six sets of propellers instead of three for that. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. And then, and then, okay. So we've got an extra three sets of propellers, and then underneath that we have got the DJI Mavic Three Cinema Premium Combo. This includes one Mavic Free Cine drone that supports Apple ProRes 422 HQ recording, uh, video recording, and has a built in one terabyte SSD. Um, that's obviously going to be a hard drive, along with the DJI RC Pro high bright display. This combo facilitates professional creation in every way. I'm assuming that's going to say every way. It doesn't actually say that. Okay, so. <laughs> That, okay, so straight off the bat, when I'm looking at these prices, I'm looking at about £2,000 for the drone itself, which is pushing the limits on my price range. But I'm not going to buy a drone by itself without the Fly More Combo. The only time I've ever bought a drone without buying the Fly More Combo is if I've crashed my drone, broke it, and I've replaced it. So I'm basically, I've already got the batteries. Ideally, you're going to want three batteries, and if you're going out and you're shooting a professional grade drone, you're going to at least want the Fly More Combo. And two and a half thousand pounds at the moment is not something that I'd be willing to invest. I haven't seen the drone properly yet, and I'm already partly ruled out. Um, unless there's some amazing feature on this drone, I don't see it happening. And then I look at the price over four grand for the Cinema Combo. That's crazy. What, let's let's have a look and see what we're getting for this, shall we? Let's go back. Um, let's go to learn more. Um, let's go. Sh let's have a quick look. So we've got the. Uh, okay, so imagining above everything. Oh, that's it. We've got to wait for ages for stuff to turn up. Seeing it's. Oh, I've got to scroll through. Okay. Okay, so a four thirds inch Cosmos Hasselblad camera. So we would hope for a Hasselblad, and they've given it. And to be fair, this is going to be a really high quality. The four thirds is quite big for a drone, which is obviously going to be impressive. We would expect something impressive for this price, though. Um, I want to know what this is going to be like in low light condition. Let's have a look. 5.1K Apple Press Row. This is going to give you the, pos the possibility of cropping in. Uh, your videos and obviously you're going to have very high quality and you're going to have a lot of control over the editing and the color grading. Omnidirectional obstacle sensing. Okay, again something we'd hope for if you've got a £4,000 drone you're going to want to make sure that this thing's not coming out the air uh, in any fashion other than landing gently on a nice platform. Great stunning imagery with legendary Hasselbrass. So let's watch the video. Let's watch the video. Okay. Okay. So obviously we've got some footage here from the uh, from the Mavic Three, and it's showing off its low light here. It's got a bit loud. Let's, let's turn the volume down a bit. Let's see. 
There we go. Okay, so um, we can see it's nice exposure. It's, it's obviously got um, high dynamic range. We've, we can see the sky is nicely exposed and the foreground's nicely exposed. The Cappadocia is somewhere I really want to go. It's really showing off, like it, it's showing off its HDI. It's, it's beautiful image quality. And uh, it's obviously going to be quite a versatile drone. In Turkey, I'd love. I've got to go to Turkey and fly my drone. Okay, so it's obviously really low light, and it's pretty impressive. I wonder if that's the drone filming or just a film of the drone. <laughs> that drone's almost dead, battery wise. Okay, I thought I was going to get a bit more information about the drone, but it looks like they're just showing the quality of the shots, and it's clearly. It. Awesome. Don't quite know what's going on with the red there. It's a bit trippy. Oh, this is a shot I want to get. I'd love to shoot a whale from above. Yeah, that, that's on my to do list. Like, one day when I can afford a decent drone, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a private trip out to private trip to find some whales and shoot footage like this. I love it. Yes, it's nice. Oh, speed ramp to hide the transition there, but still some really lovely shots. Getting the idea. It's, it's a decent drone. Okay, we don't have to watch any more of this. But let's go to the video and hopefully they'll have one with the specs. Introduction. Join us as we explore some of the most exciting features of DJI Mavic 3. Nice shots. They're nice places as well though. I'd love to shoot a volcano. Mavic 3 features a stunning Hasselblad camera with a 4 3rd CMOS sensor. Okay, we're good quality. We, we knew that we, we knew this was coming and uh, it's great to see. Having such a large sensor on a drone of this size is an absolute novelty. Yeah. Compared to smaller sized sensors, it lets you capture images at higher dynamic range and better low light performance. The 5.1K video res. Yeah, so we've we've seen that we've seen the evidence that you you get great exposure from this camera. Solution gives you incredible details and provides plenty of room for resizing and reframing in post. Yeah. Mavic 3 delivers epic slow motion shots with up to 120 frames per oh, second. Oh, see, this is something I love, and uh, I really miss uh, no, smaller cameras. To get the most out of your footage. Mavic 3 Cine uses the Apple Pro Res 422 HQ codec. Okay, so this is where we're starting to get the difference between the uh, Cine version and the uh, and the normal version, and uh, it's it's because they've got the Apple Pro Res. Um, this is obviously going to be a high codec. You're going to need um, you're going to need to record quicker. This is where the uh, onboard one terabyte SSD is going to come in, um, and also you're going to have to pay Apple for um, for the licensing to use this software as well, which is the industry standard for high quality video. Together with the 10-bit color depth and D-log image profile, 10-bit again would expect up that. A professional level of editing flexibility. Mavic 3 Cine makes sure you don't run out of storage by integrating a massive one terabyte SSD drive directly into the drone. If you so I I quite like having memory cards. It's obviously awesome to have a massive SSD and not have to worry about um, changing your memory cards and like keep cleaning it and whatever. But um, I do I say I do like to have the memory card. Um, I like to be able to take media away. So if I'm worried about my drone for any reason, like maybe it's going to get stolen or I don't like to put everything in like all in one basket. So um, being able to take memory cards out is something that I actually would quite like. But again, I know it's awesome to have an SSD. Prefer professional looking results without post processing. The Hasselblad natural color solution provides incredibly rich and accurate colors straight from the camera. 
But Mavic 3 doesn't just have one camera. Explore mode unlocks an additional half-inch sensor telecamera for up to 28 times zoom. Okay. If I spent four grand on a camera, um, on a drone, I'm not sure I'd be happy about just switching to half, half an inch sensor halfway through. Uh, if we're going out to shoot high quality, a half sensor can still get you high quality in some conditions. Like here, for example, they've, um, you've got this, you've only got a little bit of sky and, and it doesn't seem to be too much difference in light. I wonder, I wonder how good it actually performs. It'd be really interesting to see. That's cool. With the attachable wide-angle lens, you're finally able to shoot still images and video at an impressive 15.5 mm. That's cool. The new DJI That's RC nice. Pro controller offers a more precise and convenient control experience, along with a crisp, ultra-bright display. To perfectly frame your shots, reliable video transmission is crucial. The O3 Plus video transmission makes sure your connection stays smooth, even over long distances or in complex environments. Okay, I hope there's more. I'll see if there's more to this. Mavic 3 stays no. in the air. Okay, from a remote, obviously that's that's great. You don't you don't have to keep plugging your phone into it. This this should be something we shouldn't expect anyway to have, like to keep having to plug your phone in and worry about the phone battery life. But personally, I'd rather not pay the extra to have a HD screen. I don't think that's going to make a lot of difference in the final quality of the video. Um, bit disappointing. 15 kilometers is obviously massive range. I don't think you'll get that in the UK or Europe. I think that will be a US thing, just America only. For up to 46 minutes. So you don't have to worry about missing the perfect shot anymore because of low battery. Okay, 46 minutes is awesome. That's a lot of time. In reality, I'd expect it to be close to half an hour um, from my experiences. Um, so I'm still going to want free batteries. I, I rarely go out and shoot for um, for half an hour or less. You, you, you're going to want more time. Multiple visual sensors enable accurate recognition of objects omnidirectionally. As I'd hope for a four grand automatically drone. And avoid obstacles during flight. Yeah, I, I would hope if I spent four grand on a drone that it's capable of not crashing. Um, <laughs> that would be so annoying to have to keep sending it off or uh, find a replacement. Even when moving sideways and backwards. This also allows Active Track 5.0 to be more advanced than ever before, providing safe yes. and reliable tracking even of fast moving subjects in complex environments. That looks awesome. Yeah, imagine being able to go out and shoot uh, footage of yourself like that with no one else needed. Um, I'd be really interested to see how well this performs. I'm going to be looking at some reviews of that. Um, that's pretty cool. It also enables Mavic 3's advanced return to home function, as it combines these sensory capabilities with real-time data to intelligently plan and fly an optimum route back to the home point. Basically, basically return to home. <laughs> Could you imagine if that was you, if you're like working for this company and they're like, well, what, what am I working on on this drone? Um, you're going to make a really cool return to home. But, uh, okay. The master shots function automates complex aerial movements and allows anyone to get professional looking shots. Yeah, again, you'd expect something like that. With its powerful camera performance, intelligent safety features, in some of our most advanced flight technologies ever. The new DJI Mavic 3 is a must have for professional content creators. This is imaging above everything. This is DJI Mavic 3. Okay. It looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. Okay, so I'm clearly seeing an amazing drone here. This is this is certainly aimed towards professionals or incredibly keen hobbyists. Although I think this is going to rule a lot of hobbyists out. Let me know what you think. Is this it, would you get this as a hobbyist? And something else that um, hasn't been remarked on or hasn't even been mentioned in this video is the C mark or the C labeling. And uh, if you're from Europe or the UK, this is going to be a major sort of uh, a major issue. There's no guarantee that they're going to be able to put this on retrospectively at the moment either. So um, 
without without the certain qualifications, it's going to make it difficult to fly this drone. And even if you go for something like an Article 16, if you can fly this with an Article 16, um, you're still only going to be able to fly in recreational areas using that. So um, again, that's, that's another thing that's going to rule me out. But I'm looking, I'm looking at this drone. I'm seeing something real, real good quality. It's something really exciting. And this is, don't get me wrong, this is a drone I would love to own. I would love to fly. But uh, when I look at the downsides and compare them to the costs, this is something that, and it's something, I, and it's just something I can't justify buying. I haven't got enough um, commercial revenue. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need commercial revenue to come in from this, and guaranteed commercial revenue to come in for this before I can afford a drone like this. So. Um, Maybe in a year or two, uh, when I'm starting to build up some more commercial work and things, maybe things start to pick up. This would be a drone I'm looking at getting then. And I would love to fly this as a hobbyist, don't get me wrong. And some of the places I've got are amazing. I'd love to go to Cappadocia with, the, with a drone like this and fly. Um, and some of those, some of the mountainous areas and things and uh, like the mist shots. These are things I would love to fly in. But um, again, how often am I going to use this? Realistically, when I look at how often I've used my Mavic Air 2, I've probably used it three times this year, and uh, that's that's quite sad when I think of it like that. I haven't actually looked at it like that before, but a drone that I've spent uh, like a thousand pounds on, and I've used it sort of. I haven't used it too much, which is again, yeah, it's not. It's, it's a bit sad, really, and I I wouldn't be able to use uh, the the Mavic Free that much either without some pretty epic holidays, which I wouldn't be able to afford to go on if I bought this drone. Okay guys, so um, I really want to know, are you going to be interested in this drone? Is this something that you're going to commit to? Um, and if you do, I would love to know your thoughts on it. Something I particularly want to know is um, how you find the low light conditions. So if you buy this drone and you're flying it in the, at night time or uh, in low light conditions, um, please share the footage with me. Uh, let me know what it's like and um, I'll be really interested in your feedback. That's it for this video guys and I hope to see you in the next one.